Thank you for joining me today. I'm Joseph Owen, and we're going to discuss umbilical arterial catheters in neonatal infants. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to recognize the ideal and suboptimal location for umbilical arterial catheter placement, and also be able to describe the complications that can arise from a malpositioned catheter. So why do we use umbilical arterial catheters, sometimes abbreviated UACs? Well, the umbilical artery in a neonate allows us to access the central arterial system. With central arterial access, we can get real-time blood pressure monitoring, we can administer blood pressure medications, and we can get blood gas measurements. And this is quite useful in ill, premature infants, uh, especially when intubated. Now let's assess the course of an umbilical arterial catheter and differentiate it from an umbilical venous catheter. So the umbilical arterial catheter tends to have a loop or a little curl at its beginning where it enters the umbilicus, courses down the umbilical artery to the external iliac artery, into the common iliac artery, and then into the aorta. It then travels up the left of midline within the aorta, ideally to the T6 or T10 level. Now notice this patient also has another catheter in that same location or similar location here, but notice it has this smooth course that goes up to the right side of the spine over the liver into the cavoatrial junction. So that is our umbilical venous catheter. Okay. So again, we see the umbilicus here with both catheters kind of converging. The umbilical arterial catheter courses down into the pelvis and then along the left side of the spine while the umbilical venous catheter courses along the right side of the spine and takes has a more smooth entry. So now let's look at where the umbilical arterial catheter should terminate. I have labeled the upper thoracic vertebral bodies for your convenience, one through six. Again, we want the tip of our catheter, which we can see right here, okay, terminating between T6 and T10. So why is that? Well, let's think about the aorta positioned just to the left of midline and then the aortic arch in the chest. So the aortic arch is often at sort of the T3, T4 level. And coming off of the arch, we have our great vessels. And then as we think about where the next major branch vessels are on the aorta, they're going to be just below the level of the diaphragm. And that's going to be your celiac axis. But I will tell you that the location and origin of the celiac axis and superior mesenteric artery are variable, and they can sometimes arise higher above the diaphragm at that T10 level. Below the celiac axis, we have our superior mesenteric artery and then our renal arteries. So if we're thinking about where that catheter should fall to avoid the branch vessels of the aorta, right, somewhere between T6, and then we've got 7, 8, 9, and 10. So between T6 and T10, we do not anticipate any major branches of the aorta, and that's a safe position for that catheter tip. And we can see that the catheter in this patient is appropriately positioned right at the T7, T8 level where I have that star. All right, let's look at the sort of suboptimal but usable location for the catheter. So in some patients, for whatever reason, there's a great difficulty in getting that catheter to extend all the way up into the thoracic aorta. So instead, we see our catheter probably initiating somewhere around here at the umbilicus, coming down into the pelvis to the left external iliac, left common iliac, aortic bifurcation. Okay, so right there near the expected location of the aortic bifurcation, we also do not have any major branch vessels. So you can think about the aorta and where the renal artery origins are. They're going to be somewhere around L1, L2, as will the inferior mesenteric artery origin. So if we have that catheter tip around L3, 4, or 5, we should be right near that aortic bifurcation into the common iliac arteries. And it is a relatively safe but less ideal location than in the thoracic aorta. All right, so here we have another case. This was a 27 week old premature infant, day of life one. And let's look at our catheter. So it looks like right around here, I see the catheters crossing. This nice smooth catheter without any movement toward the pelvis is our umbilical venous catheter, okay? And then the other catheter at this similar location, right, turns down into the pelvis, left external iliac artery, common iliac artery, aortic bifurcation, coursing to the left of midline, right up to the level of the diaphragm. 
So this is approximately the T10 level um, right near the diaphragm. Okay, here's kind of our expected location of the diaphragm. And because of the variability in the origin of the celiac axis, utilization of a catheter at this location could put the celiac axis at risk. So it's important to recognize this at the time of catheter placement and to the readjust the catheter. And if you work in the NICU or you become a radiologist, you'll recognize that right in that first day of life when they're getting all the catheters in place and they're intubating a sick baby, particularly premature infants, they take a lot of time and make lots of little readjustments to these catheters to get them in the correct location. This is the same baby. Film shot just a few minutes later. Again, our umbilical arterial catheter coursing into the pelvis and now terminating right around T7, T8. We can see our umbilical venous catheter is coursing up here. Some might argue a little bit high given that it's probably in the right atrium, but it's an acceptable location for use. So our umbilical arterial catheter terminating between T10 and T6 and our umbilical venous catheter terminating just slightly within the right atrium. Here's an example of a very sick infant. Uh, they had meconium aspiration. We can see these dense areas of airspace of pacification. They were a full term infant. They are intubated. They have a gastric tube, okay? But that's not the things that we're looking at in this particular instance. We want to assess their umbilical venous and arterial catheter. Here we can see this smooth course of the umbilical venous catheter terminating there, which is very low along the inferior margin of the liver. And we can see the umbilical arterial catheter actually coursing here, taking its turn down into the pelvis, but terminating before the expected location of that external iliac vein. So that, that's a short catheter, not a catheter that you'd want to use um, as you would be directing anything you instilled um, through that down into uh, the iliacs and the lower extremities. Also note, they do have a small urinary catheter projecting over the pelvis, not to be confused with our umbilical arterial catheter. Here we have another case with a number of different catheters in place. Okay, we've got our gastric catheter, um, we've got umbilical venous catheter, and we've got an umbilical arterial catheter. Our umbilical venous catheter we see here, okay, coursing a little bit atypical in that it is to the left of midline, but it then crosses to near midline, terminating right at that cavoatrial junction. And then we can see our arterial catheter making that little loop, heading down into the pelvis before going up the left side in the descending aorta, right, up to here. Now. At this location, one, two, three, four. So we're kind of at the T3, T4 level. If you think about the outline of the heart, okay, the outline of the heart, something like this, right? And so that means that this catheter is approaching the aortic arch, which would be somewhere in there. And so we have our great vessel origins, right? Coming off of that aortic arch. And so this catheter is, is too high and is putting some of our uh, branches off of the aortic arch at risk. So we would want to reposition this catheter and ideally have it fall between the T6 and the T10 level. Okay, so that would be ideal. Here we have another example in a very complex patient, premature infant, complete opacification of their lungs due to respiratory distress. Okay, multiple catheters in place. We can see the endotracheal tube. We can see our gastric catheter. Uh, and then we want to identify our umbilical venous catheter, which is sitting here, terminating at the cavoatrial junction. So nice location for that catheter. Finally, our umbilical arterial catheter is likely entering the umbilicus right around here, coursing off the field of view, taking the turn, coming up the aorta, terminating nicely in the descending aorta, about around the T7 level. So well-positioned catheter and ready for use. In summary, umbilical arterial catheters are used for real-time blood pressure monitoring, sampling of arterial blood gas, and administration of blood pressure medicine. We optimally, that catheter tip needs to be between T6 and T10 in the descending thoracic aorta, where there are very few arterial branches. If you cannot get it there, a location between L3 and L5 means it's somewhere very near the aortic bifurcation or within the common iliac artery, and also may be safe to use. When the catheter is malpositioned, it can cause arterial injury or thrombosis of branch vessels off the aorta, and this most commonly occurs to mesenteric vessels such as the celiac axis, superior mesenteric artery, or the renal arterial vasculature. I hope you found this to be a useful session, and I hope you'll join us for our other sessions on catheters in neonatal infants. Thank you for your time.